Hello everyone and welcome to episode 49 of Generation GC. Prayers from Generation RX, Good Charlotte's seventh album released in 2018 with Nina McLaren. Last week we talked about Keep Swingin' from Youth Authority and next week we'll be talking about a song from Good Charlotte. Nina is 31 years old and lives in Germany. She's in a small town about an hour from Cologne. She and her husband have four cats and she works at a German kindergarten taking care of children between the ages of two and six. Nina has been a GC fan since she was 14 years old and she and her husband went to England on their honeymoon to meet Good Charlotte. Side note, by the way, totally like relationship goals. I love hearing when Good Charlotte is such a significant part of someone's relationship. I think it's incredible. Nina's hobbies are reading and playing video games like Animal Crossing or Legend of Zelda games. I really enjoyed doing this episode for a couple of reasons. Number one, it was really cool to hear from a Good Charlotte fan whose first language is not English and to learn about that perspective and what it was like exploring the music of a band when that that language that they're singing in isn't the, the one that you natively speak. And number two, it was also really cool to go pretty deep on religion and faith and beliefs. And, you know, these topics get brought up on the show pretty frequently, but we don't always get to explore them in detail. And I think we did in this episode, which was very, very fun for me. You're going to learn a lot from Nina and I both sharing our individual experiences as well as our interpretations of the song. As a reminder, I want to encourage everyone to continue visiting blacklivesmatters.card.co and antisemitism.card.co, which I'll continue linking in the show notes, to encourage y'all to keep educating yourself. Um, Joe Biden has been sworn in as president of the United States. Uh, already, I'm feeling a lot better, you know, and, and just feeling more relieved at the state of our country. But it's still important, it's so important to keep fighting against hatred and to keep fighting for social justice. Finally, Generation JC stickers! So the first batch has been sent out, the second batch are on their way, they should be at my doorstep very soon. Hopefully by the time you're actually hearing this episode I will have the stickers, but if not they are going to be at my apartment very soon. If you want a sticker, there's two ways you can get one. Number one, go to anchor.fm slash generation GC pod and support the show on there. All the money that comes in from that goes right back into the show itself, whether that's, you know, buying headphones or laptop stands or cords, adapters, or printing the stickers themselves. Um, for full transparency, I think it cost me about $36 to print the latest batch of stickers. Number two, you can make a charitable donation. Go to blacklivesmatters.card.co and donate to any of the organizations listed there. There's a lot of great organizations that could really use your help, and whatever you can donate will make such a big difference. And then you're going to send me a screenshot of either your support of the show on Anchor or your charitable donation, as well as your mailing address, and I will send you stickers. It's that easy. Well, thank you all for tuning in. Now on to episode 49 of Generation GC. So Prayers is track five on Generation RX, Good Charlotte's seventh album, released in 2018, and as of recording, their most recent album. Track four is Actual Pain, track six is Cold Song. I usually like to comment on the track listing, and basically this whole album, until you get to California, the way I say I love you, is just very intense. Prayers was the third single from the album, released August 31st, 2018, two weeks before the album came out. Although it was a single, I did not find any chart info. I guess it just probably did not get a lot of radio play. The lyrics were written by Benji and Joel Madden, song written by Benji and Joel and Zach Zervini, who produced the album. Benji sings the first verse here. And... Setlist.fm has it ranked number 29 with 36 plays recorded, although obviously that's not necessarily perfectly accurate. The first time it appears they played it was The Late Late Show with James Corden on September 13th of 2018, um, which I'm sure y'all remember that was the iconic Dr. Phil skit where Dr. Phil like puts on eyeliner and like a studded vest and joins Good Charlotte basically. Uh, and basically they they would play this song at headlining shows. 
Billy, uh, talking about this to the Cornwall Seeker, he said that James Corden had approached them with the ideas for a skit. Billy says, we thought it sounded funny. Whenever we do those types of shows, we always hope we'll get to do a skit. It's fun for the band and something a little different. It was good. It came out funny. We were there to debut our new single, Prayers, but I think the skit with Dr. Phil reached further, but that's okay. That's how the internet works these days. And as as just a, a fun little anecdote, uh, that was around the time I interviewed Good Charlotte, and I stayed in touch with their publicist for a while, Colin, and he told me that that Dr. Phil skit was, like, one of his career highlights. And, like, honestly, <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, it was That would, funny. like, totally. Yeah. They also played it at the NFL halftime show, which is very cool. Yes. So, Nina, before we dive too deep into prayers, I want to help our listeners get to know you. So, when did you first hear Good Charlotte, and what were your first thoughts on them? Well, I first heard them, at, I think it was around 2003. Mm-hmm. So, it was uh, in between The Young and the Hopeless and before Chronicles came out. Because I remember waiting for Chronicles to come out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, and I was at a friend's house. We were meeting up just like to hang out or to play board games or something. And she would always put music in the background. So yeah. she put in the Young and the Hopeless record and I immediately liked it. So when we met uh, for the next times, I always asked her to put that record in again. And um, it kind of went until I found the record in the store and I was like, oh, that's mine. <laughs> so. Yes. Since then, I basically was hooked. <laughs> Amazing. And, um, yeah, and it's like, yeah, I remember waiting for Chronicles to come out, and like those two records were always like, especially The Young and the Hopeless was like my go to record. Like, whenever I had trouble, like falling asleep or whatever, I would listen to yeah. them like really, really quietly in my ear just because I knew the song so well by then. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so it's, it's pretty cool. I love and, that. Yeah, like, my first thoughts on them were like, I mean, they looked cool. They looked punk. I was like 14. I was like, yay, <laughs> you know, that, yeah, that's right. where we're going to be. But my parents were like shocked when I put posters on my walls <laughs> from them. <laughs> so I remember like I had one little part of my wall. I always called it, called it my Good Charlotte Corner because it had <laughs> all the Good Charlotte posts on there. And yeah. my, I remember my dad coming in and he pointed at Benji and he was like, do you want to look like this? <laughs> What did you say? Did you just say yes? <laughs> no, I was like, I was just like, Dad, I like the music. And like, I'm a girl. I don't want to look like a man. <laughs> so right, like, right. And he was like, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> but like, it was so cool because like when I first saw them live, I wasn't old enough to go on my own. So my parents took me there. And after the show, my, uh, my parents were like, oh, they were pretty nice. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> so I was like, yes. <laughs> so... You also had mentioned, you mentioned this to me, but there is another very special story that I know you have about seeing Good Charlotte live. Well, we married in uh, 2016, but we were renovating our house. Like we bought a house and we're renovating it. And we, like, I kind of missed the tour they had in Germany. So Mm -hmm. when I found out they were touring, I was like, oh my God, I missed it. (laughs) So later we were talking about it and I was like, oh, but they were going to tour like uh, the UK next year and my husband was like well then let's just go there but it was like are you sure and I was like yeah (laughs) and um special thing is we didn't have an actual honeymoon after we got uh, married because of the house and everything we just wanted to move in because we got married in June and that was around the time we were allowed to move into the house or like not move in but like get inside to get everything ready and in October we were moving in I think it was September so we didn't have the time to go away and uh, then the next time we actually did go away was to see Good Charlotte. <laughs> you know, I was so excited yeah. and it was so cool. Yeah, so that's amazing. That was, yeah, that was also like really, really special to me because um, I met them there for the first time. You know, we <gasps> got the sound check tickets and I was so nervous. And yeah, it was like my husband was like, but you need to tell me who they are before we meet them. <laughs> right, like which is which, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because he was like, he he knew the music, the music, he liked them, but he was like, hmm, okay, what if I'm like, like, I don't know who is who, and I tried to teach him, but he still doesn't know. So Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's like, okay. It's okay. He still thinks the twins are Joel and Billy, and I'm like, oh, yeah, it's okay. Uh, close, <laughs> I mean, close. He can, he can, like, he he knows when he sees them, he's like, okay, that's the twins, but he's he can't remember their names. 
<laughs> so, but that's okay. <laughs> So, Nina, you are my first guest from Germany, but I was actually looking at my stats this morning for the show, and Anchor actually says that Germany is my number four country oh, with the most listeners, with 3% so of listeners. Cool. Yeah, so there's definitely a handful of other listeners uh, from Germany, which is very cool. Um, yeah, I like that. <laughs> so, I mean, you told me that, you know, your friend was playing The Young and the Hopeless, and that's how you found out about it. Was that common? Like, was it, it very common in Germany growing up for people to listen to bands like Good Charlotte or just in general? Like, were people listening to music in English? Well, uh, in English, yes, because our radio is full of English songs. Right. You know, right. so that's that's usual. Like we know all the the main stuff, but like with Good Charlotte, it was like, um, yeah, kind of like most people didn't listen to pop punk or like mm. I don't even know if there's actually a genre pop punk in German. Really. So, um, like, but I'm not like I would always say it's a rock band because yeah. that was people would be like, oh yeah, rock. I know rock because punk is harder here <laughs> so it's like they said no that's not punk and i'm like okay then we go with rock <laughs> right right so um yeah but my friends like i had like two friends who would listen to Charlotte too the one is the one who got me hooked and the other i got her hooked kind of <laughs> i love that the influence and, uh, yeah and um but like my, most of my friends they were more like into the pop music or whatever was on the charts right then so yeah but that kind of changed over the years because now when I said, when I told my colleagues we were going to England to see, like to the UK to see Good Charlotte, even one of my colleagues was like, oh yeah, I've seen them, they're pretty great. And I was like, whoa, what? you know them. <laughs> so there was like, really like, whoa. And she's like, yeah, of course I know that. It's this lifestyle one, right? And I'm like, yeah, 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 yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so oh back then I was always like, Good Charlotte, who are they? What is this? And I was like, oh, whatever. But now it's like, yay, they know them. <laughs> yeah. Was it? Yeah, pretty cool. So was it ever, like, difficult for you to understand the lyrics of the songs? Or were you able to, like, understand the lyrics and what they were saying pretty easily? Well, at first, I have to admit, I had no idea about what they were singing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because, like, I was, like, 14. I mean, we had English in school, I think, since, since I was 11. But, like... Um, I didn't pay too much attention until <laughs> I met Gucci, like, like until I met the music and I was like, oh, I want to understand this. So I got to start learning English better. Yeah, actually, uh, <laughs> exactly. And like I have a part of my family lives in America. Oh, so, really? Like, two sisters of my mother uh, moved with their husbands over there. Their husbands are American. So they met them in Germany, but moved over there. And I was like, okay, I want to talk to them better. Like I want to understand my cousins and I want I want to understand my band. I need to learn this. So that's when I started actually like paying attention to the language and yeah. So um, it's actually the music that got me yeah. like, oh, I like that. I like listening to it. And when I started translating the songs for me to understand, I fell even more in love with them uh, because like I could connect them to their messages so much, you know, like, yeah, yeah, it just felt right. And I was like, oh, that's what they're about. And they actually like, they taught me so many words. And <laughs> so like, oh yeah, I know that word because of a song. <laughs> so, yeah. That's so pretty cool. I love that. It seems like just from what you've been saying, it seems like good Charlotte's fandom has kind of grown in Germany over the years. Does that seem the case? yeah like for i don't remember like the first concert was in like 2005 like right. i don't remember if, if it was lots of people there we were not right in the front because my parents wouldn't let us go there so we were like <laughs> in the second half of the of the, uh, <laughs> of the showroom but like um yeah like when we were there in uh, cologne like uh, the last concert i saw and uh, the hall was packed so it's like yeah <laughs> yeah Amazing. This is so cool. Nina, I love, I just, I think you even saw it, but like just before we got on, um, I tweeted like some Spotify stats and anchor stats just mm -hmm. talking about like the global reach of the show. And it is very, very cool to me to have people from all over the world come on and talk about Good Charlotte. I think so too. <laughs> yeah. So Nina, we had connected over Twitter, um, I want to say over the summer, and you just immediately mentioned that you would want to talk about prayers. So what sticks out to you about that song? What made you want to talk about it? Well, it's pretty personal to me, sure. to be fair, because uh, my grandma passed away on August 29th. So it was two days before the song came out, and I was very, very sad. 
and like I was in kind of like a dark place at the moment because I was like it was so sudden like she had a hip surgery she was 86 years old and she wanted to be able to walk better again and then she went to get some treatment after the surgery and she suddenly passed away the first oh day being God. there so it was like nobody had expected this and we were all pretty shocked because she survived like the surgery went fine so we were like okay and then came the news and they were like oh we're sorry but yeah <laughs> so um and then prayers came out and i remember like lying in bed listening to it and uh, especially the lyrics and we would lay awake at night looking at the stars thinking of the ones we've lost and wonder where they are yeah it's it just it's the timing me, like, of that yeah yeah it's it's just spoke to me like okay you're not alone we're here for you just like we always have been because whenever i felt like like as a teenager you didn't feel like you you fit and it was always good charlotte there who were, were like okay hold on it's all okay like um I was never really like suicidal or something, so it's not that bad, but for me, it still was bad, you know? Sure, so yeah. So I felt lonely and I felt sad and they were always there to help me. And this was just like, okay, no, you're, no, now you're an adult, but we are still here to help you. And it's yeah. like, whoa, that was so cool. It's really special when like a band that you love, like a band that you already love, releases a song about exactly what you're going through at that exact moment. Yeah. It's like what like we're what like the star is just aligned yeah yeah yeah. it's just and my oma like my grandmother i call her oma <laughs> she was yeah. uh, very religious like both my grandparents were and uh so the religious aspect of the song kind of mirrors that for me too because it's about prayers yeah and, like they used to pray so much and like it was just a ritual of their day like to pray before we ate something or before we went to sleep like whenever i stayed over there i I heard that and I lived this, you know, yeah. so it was just like, oh my God, everything's coming back. And they're like, yeah, they're there. And when we were uh, in Cologne, I actually, uh, like at the concert, I told them about this and I asked, asked them about the song and everything. So it was really special to me to have them hear what they thought about yeah. it. Yeah, that's amazing. That's so special. Um, let's talk about what this song means. I mean, I want to hear what you think it's, what you think it's about, what you think they're mm -hmm. saying. Yeah, so back then when it came out, it was for me just like, yeah, we're here for you. We know the pain and we're here like we always, we always have been, you know, like, like I said, and it just helped me so much. But yeah. aside from that, it's like, um, well, I think the, the meaning of the song is we're all human people, so we should treat each other equally respectful because we're all the same. Yeah. So, but why is that not happening? Like, uh, why are we as, like, I'm Christian too, so why are we as Christians, we are taught this, I think it's commandment of love. Mm -hmm. which is like love your neighbor as you love yourself yeah but it's like i don't see this yeah i think th i feel like there's an element of like doubting religion here um i think that first verse to me it's about i relate to that first verse so much i i haven't found you know that kind of person personally but i i i can feel that feeling of just being like feeling so isolated and then you finally meet someone you really connect with and you're just like floored and bewildered and this connection is so deep that it, in its own way it feels spiritual because it's like oh i can like talk about anything with this person like we just we connect with each other and i think they're talking about the maybe that opens their eyes to kind of some horrors in the world um and just realizing how pointless it is to like send thoughts and prayers if you're not actually doing anything and yes exactly i feel like maybe there's a feeling of losing human connection like in because instead of helping we're just praying and not doing anything and i feel like in this definitely definitely like doing my research on this song and what they've said about it um has kind of influenced what i'm saying here but i think there is an element of like kind of doubting religion and belief because it's like if so many people say oh we're gonna pray for you but they don't do anything what does religion mean what what does prayer actually mean yes and like where do you even pray like you can do so much more like yeah yeah like yeah <laughs> yeah i mean and it's like it doesn't necessarily mean that you can't pray just like yeah praying in and of itself isn't going to you know help a starving child exactly yeah 
Well, let's talk about some backstory of the song, some of what the band has said about the song. Um, so there was this really great interview with Face Culture. Um, and listeners, I will link this in the show notes because it was like seven or eight minutes where basically they're talking about this song entirely. I'm kind of paraphrasing, but I did. Like I tried to type out what they were saying so I could have <laughs> in my notes. But Benji was talking about how he felt completely isolated and alone in the world. And then when you meet that person, for me, my wife, you meet that person who makes you feel not alone anymore. You connect, you really show up for each other. All of a sudden, everything else begins. You start to ponder life and existence. And he talked about all of the things going wrong in the world and in the country, that this political agenda is not very compassionate or empathetic towards people who come from different walks of life and different places and different ethnicities. There's no compassion. And Joel said that, you know, it's, I really liked that they ha that Joel brought this up, but he said, we've been asking that question since the anthem. I was pissed off and said, I don't want to be like you. I don't want to be categorized. We're all people with real lives. We deserve to be heard and felt. And Benji said, we deserve the right to identify ourselves with what we identify and feel free and like it's okay and feel safe. And Joel said, I guess I'm just asking everyone that question. What's the point of all of this? Do our prayers mean anything at all if we're not actually coming to the middle? And Benji said, if you're saying that in the name of God, why does it feel so hateful? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There was this, God, this NPR interview is so good. And it's funny because I, like, <laughs> I don't think of NPR when I think of the outlets that would talk about Good Charlotte, but I'm so glad they did because I feel like this was just, and listeners, you know, maybe you remember, but like I've referenced this NPR interview on the show at least once before, and I feel like multiple times, but I feel like it's good because it would probably connect people who just would be would care about what they're seeing, even if they don't necessarily care about who Benji and Joel Madden are. <laughs> so kind of paraphrasing here at first, Benji talked about how a lot of people's lives didn't turn out as good as him and Joel's. Like they came from nothing and ultimately they made it through. Not everyone does. Ultimately, Benji and Joel made it through, and he said, I just think it's pure luck and the grace of God. I also think we were lucky to have each other as brothers. We made a deal when we were 16 that we were always going to stick together and never let anything come between us, and we shook hands on it, and we never looked back. Yeah, I love this. <laughs> yeah. He talks about how important it is to remind each other that we're all human and to have some compassion for each other. Um, and he says... I don't want to sound too, like, zen or anything, but for me, that's why it hits so hard when Peep passed away or when XXX passed away. Mm -hmm. All these kids that you just, you go, I wish I could have been a part of their life to maybe have, maybe even just influence in some positive way. And so we do wonder if we matter anymore. I said it to my wife the other day, and then we go, you know what? All we can do is just think about what we can put into the world, not really kind of what we can get out of it. And the rest... Just is that's that's all the universe, you know. Yes, it's interesting to me because I mean, you know, they they would talk about how things like the passing of Lil Peep kind of influenced this album, right? Mm. And I like how he kind of tied that all together, like with this song here, and I could kind of see how you know Benji and Joel made it out, you know. Not only did they make it successful, but, like, they are alive, you know, versus so many people who just didn't. Um, and it's like, well, like, if we made it by the grace of God, like, what does that mean for these other people, you know? Mm, exactly. I'm going to reference again that Cornwall Steaker interview that Billy did. And Billy says that he did not come from a religious background. But he said that, you know, the statement thoughts and prayers is okay if it makes you feel better and helps clear your conscience, but there's more to do to help people. And he says that he hopes the song um, will help people talk and have an open conversation about what they can do to help others besides saying empty words. 
Uh, I like to be grounded a little more in reality. There are ways we can work together to make a difference. Just having a thought and prayer about someone is only going to go so far. Yeah. <laughs> there is also a website, uh, friendlyatheist.pathos.com, where this was, again, a quote from Billy. And he talks about, again, not growing up in religion or, or believing in it really. Um, and he says, we travel all around the world, and there are a lot of real events that have happened in the last few years that make you question how safe we really are. I'm from Annapolis, Maryland, and the shooting of the Capitol Gazette hit close to home. That specific event didn't inspire the song since it was written prior, but it feels very relevant to the lyrics nonetheless. And then one more interview quote I want to read before we have a big discussion, I think. <laughs> um Joel did an interview with the BBC where he says that it's liberating to tackle these big subjects. I never really had the confidence to lend my voice to any bigger conversations. Usually I stay out of everything. Ultimately, I think it can be taken the wrong way. I wasn't saying prayers are useless. I'm questioning if we're all living what we say. Are we all acting on our words? So I'm, I'm glad he like clarified that. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like it would be very easy to get out of this song, oh, just don't bother praying, it's stupid, yeah. you know? Um, so let's get into some, like, pretty big questions. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll try to, like, go through them kind of one by one, and we'll, we'll see, because, like, there's so much, that, like, there's yeah, just so much yeah. here. Is this song critiquing religion? And... Can we have faith? Can we have some kind of faith without religion? What do you think? That's really hard, I think. Like, um, like praying is something for me. Like, you don't... Ah, I don't know how to say this, but like, when uh, I talked to the band about it, and um, I really like what they said, actually. Like, um, I have it written out here because like yeah. we were told to put our phones away yeah. but um <laughs> like we did we did we put our phones away we are like innocent here but a little angel may or may have not recorded my question because like when they heard me talking about it they probably just recorded so like you don't you see the band from behind them you see me actually <laughs> like, yeah and so i know what they said to it because I'm, like i'm really grateful for that so i could listen to it over and over again yeah and to that, like Benji said, uh, we all believe in like a greater or like a higher power. And he said, like, everyone believes in God in their own way. Like, it doesn't have to be a God as a yeah. God, but something is there. And we have to work hard. We have to continue to try and push ourselves to grow and to be better and to do better, you know, like, and I think that's basically about it. Religion has always this kind of a lot, a lot of rules, mm -hmm. but if you stick to the to the good ones, to the ones that, that are about love and about respecting each other, I think that's basically enough. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think, I think more than religion, this song is critiquing prayer without action, right? I definitely think. So, you know, listeners, you hear me talk about anti-Semitism in the intro every week, and you hear me mention that I'm Jewish, right? And... Mm -hmm. Judaism, I think, is a little unique, possibly, from some other, like, religions or organized religions in the world in that, for a lot of people, Judaism is as cultural as it is a system of beliefs. Like, if you ask me my culture, like, I'd probably say I'm Jewish over, like, what countries my family may have come from. Mm -hmm. And it's like I have my own beliefs in God or whatever it is. And, and I've, like, realized in recent years that those are separate from Judaism, you know? Okay. So I think you definitely can have some kind of faith or belief in whatever higher power. I, I definitely think you can have that without an organized religion. Yes. Like, you don't need the church. Yeah. You know? I mean, I'm sorry for some people that's, like, bad to say this, but... I personally think, like, you don't need the church to pray. And, right. Yeah, it's just kind of, like, inside of you. Like, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can see the value, but I, it's, like, it's very easy for me to criticize organized religion just because of 
all of the negative things that have come out, <laughs> you know, and all the things that continue to happen and that especially it, it tends to be people doing all these hateful actions because God said so. Yes. And I have what, what Joel said about that, actually. <laughs> oh, what did he say? Yeah, he said, um, and as much as I love spirituality, I, I have a really big problem with people who use religion and spirituality to condemn other people. So it's like, um, he thinks the idea of prayers and God are just thrown around. So the older he gets, the more of a problem he has with people hating each other, but kind yeah. of using these ideas of love and God, you know? So that's like, I was like, that's so true because like we learned in school, wars were started because everyone was like, God mm -hmm. is with us. And I was like, but that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I, you know, it, it's like, I see the value in having an organization like that. Um, I made a couple friends in college by going to Shabbat services at Hillel mm -hmm. every week. Like, that was why I went. Mm -hmm. I didn't go because I felt like I needed to, you know, read the prayers. I, I went because I wanted to, like, find a group of like-minded people. Yes. But then obviously you just see so many negative things kind of coming out of it. You know, the Westboro Baptist Church being a very obvious example. Um, I don't know how much of that bled over into Germany, but I'm, I'm sure you're at least somewhat aware. No, not really. Like, tell me, like, if you want to tell me about it, but I'm not yeah. sure, like, I'm not really on the news, so. <laughs> so, the Westboro Baptist Church, uh, they would pick it, like, warped tour. They would pick it at colleges, basically saying, like, really hateful things, like, that God hates gay people, and you're all, oh my gosh. like, yeah. everyone's going to hell, and it, it's, it was just like, okay, like, what are you doing? Like, yeah, exactly. doesn't your God want you to love people? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I think. Like, I'm not, like, I have read the Bible when I was, like, 12, I think. So yeah. I'm not, like, but but I, I built my, kind of, like, my own faith out of everything yes. I learned. Yes. And um, <clears throat> so, to me, God is someone who, who loves us. Yes, yeah. Because that's also what my grandparents told me. Like, as a child, that was obvious. God was something good, something great, something you can trust. As I grew up, I realized, okay, but he's not like the savior of the world because there's still deaths happening yeah. and terrors happening and everything. So my faith got a little bit shaken. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So and um, but my faith is shaken now, like it's never yeah. been before. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, um, but that's also like like even good childhood has helped me there because yeah. they kind of sometimes pull me back and they're like you can still do your prayers. It's okay. Like if it, if it helps you just yeah. do it, you know? So, and, um, yeah. <laughs> I, I relate to that a lot. Um, just, you know, in my, in my own ways, I think like having, I come from a very reform Jewish background. So that means, you know, for anyone listening, that's not aware, you know, whereas an Orthodox Jew would follow things like rituals and traditions to the letter and essentially be, much more strict. Um, a reformed Jew is, it's a little looser, uh, a little little more kind of liberal in the interpretations. Um, some reformed Jews, including like my family, my family didn't keep kosher growing up, but I definitely had to kind of like form my own beliefs because it was like, yeah, I was exposed to a lot of stuff from an early age, but it, I, I remember learning that like a lot of Jews, a lot of Jews, questioned if not entirely lost their faith after the holocaust like not surprising right no. um it was horrible it's i think for me and it's funny because i went to a university that was like had a very strong proposition of science majors and engineering majors who stereotypically are not religious like stereotypically those type of people are like atheists or agnostics um but for me it was like any kind of time i did learn about science i was like oh my god that's so cool and that's so fascinating and beautiful and perfect like someone higher up <laughs> planned this all out you know like it didn't yeah. just happen that's how i feel anyway what here here's another big big question is like what do you think it means to pray and like what's the point of prayer well, to me it's like 
A prayer is something you can put all your worries in. Mm -hmm. And if you send it all to God with an amen, then you kind of feel a little lighter around your heart. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's basically all. If you just, like, if someone really is in trouble and you cannot be there right now, yeah. like, with yeah. the situation, obviously, right now, and um, you can just think about them and send them your positive thoughts because that's all you actually can do. Right. Like, except for like calling them and everything, of course, but like, it's a prayer for me. But, is that is, but that's, 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 you know, calling them. Sometimes that really is the action, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's right. True. <laughs> like, like you can't, you know, like, like if your friend gets broken up with, you can't like make her boyfriend get back together with her, mm. but what she's, you know, probably what they're feeling is, sad and lonely and upset and the action like the way to help is calling them and being there for them you know yeah 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 i think i think that's a good way to put it for sure though that it's kind of like your way of like sending your worries into the world um i think it's a way to me i almost help it i almost feel like it kind of helps me process my own thoughts in a way um and whether it's like you're speaking it aloud or thinking it or writing it down, it's like kind of validates like this is important. Um, mm -hmm. To me, it's like, okay, maybe this will help me come to an answer. It's like if I feel like I don't know what to do, maybe I pray and maybe that helps me figure out some kind of answer of what I can do. Exactly. Like it kind of clears your, your thoughts in a way, because you sent them out and then there's yeah. space for more. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, you know, something I was thinking about. And I, I often sort of like almost jokingly, but, you know, for fun, like I'll post on social media. Like, like I remember in 2019, I, I posted on Twitter my 2019 bucket list for interviews, like all, you know, the bands that I wanted to interview in 2019. Um, and the artists I wanted to interview. Actually, let's let's pull that up because I know I got some of them and I just... <laughs> okay. So here was my 2019 bucket list of interviews, um, which I, I said I was speaking it into existence. <laughs> uh, Walk the Moon, who end of December 2019, I got an email that I was like, I was like recruited to specifically interview them for a oh. piece. So um, Missio was one of them. I interviewed them in early 2019. I did not interview Lauv, Mike Posner, or Sean Mendez, but uh, who knows, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but to me, it was like when I would do something like that, like speaking it into existence and, you know, positive, positive thoughts and the secret, like people talk about that. To me, that's like, it gives me the courage to do the actions I need to take, I think. Yeah. Whether that's, okay, I just need to keep networking and connecting with people. I need to work on my writing and my interviewing. I need to do this. I need to do that. Um, for me, that helps. Although I know some people are, some people are like more secretive kind of about things. And I don't think there's necessarily like a right way. Yeah, exactly. But I think like you did when you write it down, it's always there for you to see. Yes. So you kind of, like you said, you focus your good energies on it and maybe something channels into the world and it happens, you know, it's just like, I think that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. So especially in the early years of Good Charlotte, I got the vibe that the twins believe in God, had a Christian faith, but weren't necessarily churchgoers from some of these quotes of the interview as well as like this song and then on actual pain they talk about i don't need a reason to believe if my faith's already broken um I, I don't know like are they saying they no longer believe in anything are they saying their faith is destroyed are they saying they don't pray anymore that they're not part of any kind of faith anymore what do you think no i don't think that's what I mean, I think it's it's um it's it's from <clears throat> like from time to time you feel like you lose yourself and you lose yeah. connection to everything, and I think that's what it's about, like with actual pain and stuff. But then, 
um, like there's always dark before the light, you know, so that's, mm -hmm, <laughs> that's mm -hmm. more now, but like, um, like it has to be dark to, to be light again. And I think that's, that's what it is about. There's some, some parts, some, some points in your life where you're like, okay, what is faith? What, what am I doing? This is not working. I don't want this. Yeah. But then it will somehow get back to you. So yeah. I, yeah, I think they, they, I mean, they told me they still like, at least they believe in a higher power. Like, yeah, he's more the spiritual, not, not the so much religious, re religious guy, but like, yeah, for me, that's still faith. And yeah, like, I don't know, like, I mean, we don't know them personally, you know, exactly. Like, I don't know how, how much they actually believe, like what picture they have of God. Yeah. You know, because for me, it's just, when I really am in my faith, it's like, okay, it's, it's a great power, <clears throat> sorry, a, a good power. And um, sometimes I'm like, okay, where are you right now? You right. know, so, right. so I don't know how they see it, but like, I do think they still believe. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, and it was funny because as I was like sitting down doing my notes the other night, I was like freaking out and I was like, wait a minute, are they saying they just don't believe in anything anymore? I don't think that's it, though. I, I think you're right. And I think, I think it's very normal for people to question their faith, number one. Especially, it's like, when you see, you know, if you come from, like, a very Christian background, and then you see, mm -hmm. often it's Christians doing just hateful, awful stuff that is not what, you know, Jesus Christ would have said. Exactly. <laughs> of course you're going to, like, it, yeah, of course you're going to question that. Yeah, it's like how Jesus kind of said, like, if someone hits you, just, like, point your other cheek at him and be like, okay, hit here too, you know? Like, right. that's kind of a saying we have, and it's just like, nobody would do that. Like, I wouldn't do that either, though, but, like, <clears throat> um, you can see even even higher church people won't do that, and I'm like, yeah. but you're supposed to. <laughs> like, right, and it's, I think, I think it's very normal to question your faith, and that's what, like, a lot of Good Charlotte songs that have being about religion and God and faith, a lot of them have been about questioning it. Like, yeah. think about, think about, this is like one of my favorite juxtapositions, but think about the river versus right where I belong. Yeah. <laughs> like, the river is like feeling lost, and then right where I belong is feeling at home, you yes, know? Yes, exactly. And like right where I belong to me was always also like like when I listened to it the first time I was like okay what is he singing about and then I listened actually to the lyrics again and I was like is he singing about God? I mean <laughs> so, he says God is all and, around me. Yeah yeah exactly. No. And, yeah and, and um, but like like I was piercing it all together then and I was like oh <laughs> you know, so, because like when I listen to songs I usually just get like parts of it like mm -hmm. I mean f by now I'm better at hearing and understanding English sure. so for the Generation RX record um, it took me like I think on the first listen I almost I got like 95% of all those of all the lyrics but um, like back then when cardiology came out it was just like background music you know yeah, so, yeah. and then like I, I do remember like for the river I always I sang a line completely wrong <laughs> and um, like yeah, I'm the product because I was out on my own. Now I'm trying to find my way back home is what he says. And I always sang never trying to find my way back home. And I was always like, <laughs> but that doesn't make sense. But like, it's like even like <laughs> even people who are native English speakers, sometimes you listen to a song that's in English and you get the words wrong. Like Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well that was really like but then I understood now I'm trying and I was like, Oh, that's what you're saying. Okay, now I get it. Yeah. <laughs> so, There's I, I, I like I, this will definitely come up when I eventually do an episode on Right Where I Belong, and I have a lot of ideas for that episode, but, like, <laughs> um, there's a song called Tunnels by Angels and Airwaves, mm -hmm. and it's very funny because, like, I had been playing that song on repeat, and then I was like, you know, I'm kind of curious, like, what Tom DeLonge wrote, wrote this song about. Um, and basically that song is the juxtaposition of doubt and belief, which I think is normal, and I think also is very normal, at least in my own experience, is, and it kind of seems like maybe the members of Good Charlotte have had similar experiences, but in my own experience, it's like, I definitely believe in something, 
But I just, I don't know what that is or what that looks like. Mm -hmm. And do I look for a belief system that kind of tells me what to believe and aligns with my thoughts and morals? Or do I just kind of try to figure it out on my own? Because I think like, you know, whether or not you go to church or synagogue or whatever, it can be helpful to like learn about specific religions just to see like to me i would love to just like learn more about different religions just Mm -hmm. to get like kind of a better picture to figure out like what it is i actually believe yeah yeah it's like for me it's hard to to um concentrate on just one religion because there are aspects of other religions i really like Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know like i like the idea of a guardian angel but my um oh my gosh what's i think it's not priest but I don't know, but like the, the head of my church told me, she was like, yeah, but that's not like our Christian belief. We don't have guardian angels like that because right. we are, um, oh, we are not Catholic. We are the other, I think it's Protestant in English, but I'm not sure. So, um, so it's kind of different for us too, but I was like, yeah, yeah but I like that. <laughs> so right, for me, right. I still kind of keep that because I'm like, okay, whatever. If I like it, I take it. Yeah. And like uh, for other religions, like if there's an idea that feels right to me, I'm just like, I'll adopt it. Like, I don't care if everybody says that's not right. I'm just like, whatever. If I feel good with it, if, if I feel happy, if it makes me happy, then, like, why can't I just take it? Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm not misusing it in a, in a way. So I'm just doing it to feel better. It's stuff like that that kind of makes me feel like religion and beliefs. Beliefs. Like, we'll, we'll say, like, faith and religious beliefs is, like, one of the most personal things mm-hmm. because – so often it is like kind of a combination of things that may be different, maybe come from different backgrounds or maybe they're just your own, you know? Um, And I think that's really healthy to like, just kind of think about. And I feel like that's what they're saying, what they were saying in that one interview, face culture, um, that everyone wants to think for their self and be, accepted for who they are and what they believe in exactly and even if you are like oh i can't say the word atheist what is it and uh, like if, if you don't believe in anything that's mm-hmm. okay atheist yeah yeah atheist. If, if you don't believe in anything that's that's completely okay yeah. because that's for you and it, it doesn't change my beliefs and it doesn't threaten my beliefs so go ahead <laughs> yeah yeah exactly and i think it, that's it, yeah that's something like the whole religion as a as a um as, as a company or whatever it is like doesn't really understand because they're like we are the only one you know right. so and this is just like no you're not <laughs> well and it's like it's like especially funny to me if like christ like a christian will say we're the only one and mm-hmm. to me it's like well literally christianity wouldn't have happened without <laughs> judaism exactly but you know yeah that's a separate issue <laughs> yeah <laughs> But yeah, I totally get that. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I I I feel like I want to say, like, I don't want to say I'm bashing individual people who get a lot out of organized religion, right? Like, like I said, I went to Hillel services in college in college for Shabbat, and I had a very good experience out of that, mm-hmm. just getting to connect. There weren't a whole lot of Jewish people at my college. So going to Shabbat services was really important for me to connect with other Jewish people. Yeah. But it's like hating hating the system, not the individual who partake in it. Exactly. Um, like our church did some great things too. Like every uh, on the, in the summer breaks, we have like six weeks of summer break, mm-hmm. and they would also always take like two weeks of this and take all the the young people who want to go and drive with them like to a different place and just have like like a camp there. Yeah. So that was I love that you know. So and I my grandpa my grandpa was working for the church in a way mm-hmm. so um he was doing like he wasn't doing the the mass itself but like he was working in the background and everything so the church to me is also a building like i grew up with yeah so you know but like when you when you hear the news about what happens in the world and how the church as a symbol is there it's just so different yeah and and i think there is like being able to separate in your in your own mind being able to separate 
the church and the people who, you know, kind of follow that cult-like manner and be like, well, this is what the church says and um, versus the faith itself. My last question on this note is if the thoughts and prayers, if sending thoughts and prayers is useless, like what should we do? Well, I think we should do anything. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's basically like, um, if it's like you said, if it's just calling someone or if it's just like, like donating or like, like giving away stuff you don't need to people that do need it or like whatever. If it's just like listening to someone, Mm -hmm. like going there and be like, I'm here for you. I listen. And like also pray. That's totally fine. But like, yeah, there needs to be some, some kind of action that follows that. Yeah, absolutely. I think exactly. Yeah. Doing is the big thing. Like maybe pray to help figure out what you need to do. Pray in addition to taking action, not as a substitute. Um, we, we talked about the river and right where I belong, but, uh, in terms of like other good Charlotte songs, prayers relates to, I think we believe seems like a pretty direct kind of correlation because it's like, we believe is like, Oh, the world is messed up, but like, we still believe in love. Uh, maybe that's faith. Maybe that's God, but we still believe the world is ultimately good. And Mm -hmm. then you have this song where they're like, um, the world is messed up and people are just praying and doing jack shit. So like, what the F? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I, I don't know. Maybe these songs, maybe those songs contradict each other, but I think that also just goes back to everything we were saying about like, it's very normal to question your faith and it's yeah very normal to like lose it at times and come back to it. And I think if you actually start praying, there's some part of inside of you that at least wants to believe something. Yes. So, <laughs> yes. There is a music video for this song. Uh, and there was a post about it on Rolling Stone that explained that the man that's kind of the focus of this video is a real life friend of the band. Um, And this video kind of follows this man and his parents as they work hard, uh, you know, fixing cars in the driveway. The, The man himself is booking shows. He loves music. And they're constantly contributing to their community, but they're just under constant threat of deportation by ICE, Immigrations and Customs Enforcement. Um, and despite everything they're up against, this man and his family just remain optimistic and proud to call themselves American. Um, related note that the cost of making this video was donated to RACES, the Refugee and Immigrant Center for Education and Legal Services, which is a 501c3 nonprofit that promotes justice but by providing free and low-cost legal services to underserved immigrant children, families, and refugees in Texas, which is fantastic. Yes. I really like this idea, like, that they did yeah. that because it was like, oh, that's so great. Like, yeah, that's their action of doing something. Yes. I, I mean, and that's a very direct action, right? Yes. They're not just saying, oh, here, here's this man, you know, and who is under threat of deportation. They're saying, well, we are, we are actually giving money, you know? Yeah. Um, it's like like the role models like they're they're talking about praying itself doesn't like praying on their own doesn't work on its own doesn't work but like you need to do something and here look we did something yeah we are doing something like yeah and from from what i understand um this the song wasn't necessarily written about ice but clearly that's a thing that very much relates to it um you know and the people that I've that I've even known in my personal life that have you know supported removing immigrants from the U.S. tend you know very often are from a religious background, um, and it it definitely like you know I watch I I watch this video and it's like it makes me think of so many things that I do take for granted for sure. Yeah, that's true. Like I have a great apartment in a great city and. My parents, my parents both, you know, my parents both work very professional jobs and I don't have to worry at any time that they are going to, like, get sent back to another country, you know? Mm -hmm. Exactly. 
this video was directed by Jake Stark, who did all the videos for this album. So this one, I think, has, like, it's different from the other videos for this album in that it has, like, this storyline and it depicts a real person, but it keeps, I think, a similar color palette to what they've done, which is nice. It feels, like, very cohesive. I also really love that they're playing, the band is playing in the desert. Like, the first verse talks about loneliness and isolation, and I feel like the desert adds to that for sure. Yeah, and like when I rewatched it, like I think yesterday or the day before, I noticed that uh, throughout the song the sun changes because yes. obviously they were recording right. for like a long, they were filming for like a long time, and um, sometimes it's like they they have they they use the the lower sun like the darker light to emphasize the darker lyrics. Yeah. But then, then sometimes the sun goes up and it, it just fits with the lyrics and I was just like is that intentional or is it just like me right. interp interpreting things <laughs> it's just like whoa right. that's cool <laughs> so. right. yeah no they have a very good use of light in this video I really liked that I want to read some reviews of that talk about this song mm -hmm. uh, Sound Digest said that the chorus uh, about the chorus they said these are some heavy serious lyrics but it's definitely something that needs to be heard. It's hard to find a respectable way to address such a big issue, but Good Charlotte did it justice. While the song has more of an electronic sound than their classic rock vibe, it fits with the topic at hand. Yes. Yeah. Wall of Sound, which I believe is an Australian site because it's wallofsoundau.com. They said that Prayers was the best single so far uh, and that it's about time a band tackled this issue idea because as someone so removed from religion i'm sick and fucking tired of seeing people sending thoughts and prayers thinking it'll actually do anything instead of addressing the issues with change this obviously applies to america's shit gun laws which still haven't been changed after over 28 mass shootings this year alone i read that number last week it may have gone up since then yeah. what one of the saddest things i've read i remember reading earlier this year um a couple months into like the lockdown was that 2020 was the first year in several with like the lowest number of school oh, shootings yeah. in america because kids were at home yeah that's really it's well, disgusting it's yeah. yeah uh metal breakdown did a video review saying i love the pronunciation of prayers so much the electronics fit really well. The chorus is fire. That was definitely the most mainstream song out of the three singles. I don't know if it was mainstream, but yeah, I get yeah. it. <laughs> Bucket list music reviews. We're going to read some negative reviews now. Okay. Bucket list music reviews gave it a 2 out of 10. They said that they I would have tolerated an album that tried to replicate the and the hopeless but Generation RX doesn't do that. They said, I would have applauded an album that strived to go in a completely different direction. I would have tolerated an album that tried to replicate being in the hopeless. Sadly, Generation RX says neither of these things. It is almost caught between the two. Diehards may find some redeeming qualities on this album. For my money, Prayers is the best track, but the majority audience and casual listener will likely not find anything worth adding to their rotation on this album. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like... I don't think so. Like, it's not trying to copy the Young and the Hopeless, obviously, because they are in a totally different right. position in their lives. And Generation RX is just so much darker and everything. Yeah. But it's also, it, it con contains, is that the right word? It contains mm -hmm. so much hope. Yes. So I'm like, you didn't listen properly. <laughs> yeah. Punk News gave the album a two out of five and said that Prayers is a soaring song that just misses the mark. That and Leech would fit perfectly on Linkin Park's last album. Okay. okay. I mean, uh, yeah, they were definitely taking a lot of Linkin Park inspiration on this album. Yeah. So, like, yeah, well, well said. With the history of the record. So. Yeah. <laughs> so, here's a review that I found a little confusing. Um, Sputnik Music gave the album a 1.5 out of 5. Of course, we can't leave out the fact Good Charlotte plagiarized That's the Spirit so brazenly it gives BFMV a run for their money. It's Is a mainstay. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, yeah. It's a mainstay <laughs> element that is impossible to overlook. Prayers shamelessly pillaging of Follow Me is an obvious one. 
Prayers is one of the worst cases, however. A slightly more nuanced handling is gripped firmly throughout, but is still plain to see. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not really familiar with that album, That's the Spirit. Like, I saw Bring Me the Horizon on that tour, but I, I haven't spent a whole lot of time listening to them. Um, I don't know. So, like, I don't want to say that's wrong because I just, I don't really know the album they're referring to. Yeah. But, like, I have to be honest, this review contains so many words, I just don't know. I was like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever. Like, I don't even understand what they're trying to say. Like, I get that they're saying it's bad, but, like, I don't, I mean, I don't get why. I mean, basically, they're trying to say that it's, like, a cheap knockoff of Bring Me the Horizons. That's the spirit. Okay, yeah, but I didn't listen to that, so I can't right. say about that. Like, I don't, like, I don't know. <laughs> but I can say, like, um, there's only so many, like, notes you can put in a row to make a rhythm. Because you can't, right. like, make new ones. So it might sound like that. I don't know. Yeah. Like, yeah. You can't get something out of nothing. Like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Like, even if it sounds the same, yeah, so what? It's a good song on its own. Yeah. Um, I want to read some comments, some fan comments. And these are actually from that interview with Face Culture that we keep referencing. So... Nava Joe says, so proud of these boys. GC has kept me seen among the darkness in the world. Uh, X23 Rizki says, as someone who has come to a stronger faith in Christianity in the past few years, I can definitely understand where the Maddens are coming from on this. Looking over my past of what I would call passive faith, I would definitely pray without action. It was merely words. But from growing in my relationship with Jesus, I can now I can say the following. I now believe that God is good and is doing good for the sake of all people. This God sent his son to die for our sins so that we may gain salvation through his blood and sacrifice. I, I mean, this person goes on and on. And <laughs> yeah, I don't, uh, I'm not sure if they entirely got <laughs> the song or what yeah. they were saying but i think that's that's fair and it seems like this person has a lot of awareness on their faith um yeah and i think it's like it's good for them you know like i'm happy yeah. she found or, or they found something in like their their lives to believe in and yeah yeah i like that one more comment on that interview lionheart says and this uh, oh boy I find it interesting that liberals who claim to be accepting of so many different peoples also support the ab abortion of 59 million babies all around the world. Religious people who support strong borders aren't doing something immoral or illegal. Mm. Uh, yeah. uh, though I'm in favor of more tolerant immigration laws myself, I would never equate someone who wants border security to some kind of fanatic who hates other people it seems like you two are just against conservatives who happen to be religious yeah, yes i think they are against you know a lot of conservatives <laughs> yeah yeah I, I well and that's that's kind of the whole point i think that they're against mm. people who use religion as an excuse um so we'll read a couple youtube comments on the music video real quick Slow Dotto too said coming from someone who was smuggled into the u.s at nine months old Thank you for this. Yeah. I mean, yeah. so many stories of people who, you know, came to the U.S. young and their parents brought them in. A lot of people talking about Benji's singing. Seven Speed says, Aww. WTF, I can't distinguish Joel and Benji's voices. <laughs> like, that's what I love about this song so much is that Benji, like, sings the verses. So, like, they are, I wrote it down somewhere, like, they're switching back and forth. Yeah. Instead of just singing together like they usually do. Mm -hmm. Like, I really like that, that he's got his own parts in the song. And it's just like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Raphael Lesniak said, born on a lonely planet. We've got 7.7 .7 billion people on this small planet, yet so many of us are incredibly lonely. Honestly, true. Yes, that's true. very, very true. And it's very, 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 very sad, too. But yeah. that's the truth. Cat Solo said... Not emo, real. More like having a heart that, no matter how hard the world tries, can't break. Stevie B said, Wow, how far have these boys come from their pop punk beginning? What an incredibly touching, poignant video. Massive applause. And last comment I'll read from Samantha Cato. 
This song is making me cry. My niece is four years old and is in the system because her parents are on drugs and I didn't have money for a lawyer. I still pray to get her back. And I hope you did too. This has been this has been very good, Nina. This is definitely like <laughs> definitely like not a super lighthearted conversation, but I think like important and I think really relevant. Yes. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. So how has this song held up for you? Well, it's still kind of like a safety blanket for me. Sure, because yeah. it was being released when I needed it the most. And um, like it was also like when they played it at the show and like when they usually have like from the from the show I saw and from the videos I saw from other shows, they start with like purple background lights and I got all emotional. I was like, oh my God, oh my God, it's this song. And then they started playing it and I was like, oh my gosh, because like um, like in Cologne, Benji's voice went, went right into my heart. Like oh. it, it kind of felt like he was singing purely for me because we talked about the song before. Yeah. Like before the show, you know? So, and yeah, that meant a lot to me. Like, I yeah. love that so much. If, if I'm very, very sad again, like when I'm in a, when I'm like grieving again a lot, I put the song on and I'd be like, it's okay. Yeah. You know? So yeah, that helps me a lot. I love that. What has Good Charlotte meant to you over the years and how has that changed? Well, um, I don't, uh, the change is only that it got, bigger i think because yeah. um yeah, yeah like well, what changed was when i was like 14 i would like collect every piece of magazine they were in like, same friends same. were like giving me uh they, they, they would cut them out of their magazines oh, yeah. and hand them over to me yep, <laughs> so yep, yep, i had yep. this big folder with everything in it <laughs> and i don't have that anymore and i actually regret that but i thought i was like you're grown up now you don't need this anymore and i was like like a year later i was like why did i put that away <laughs> Um, yes, <laughs> relatable. <laughs> but I'm like, okay, you're 31 now. You don't need this. <laughs> right. The internet. And it's like, um, I just love that I'm connecting uh, with people so well because of Kuchalo. Like, I met one of my best friends, like, through them. And this is like, that really means a lot to me. Yeah. Like, That's they always amazing. have been my go-to band when things get rough. Like, they are with me for more than half of my life now. And they just mean so much to me, you know. I and love that. Like when I first met them, I was very anxious about them not being the way they seem to be because everyone right. was like, "Oh, they are so nice and everything." And I was like, "But what if they are assholes? Like, right, <laughs> like what right. if they say something that kind of hurts me in some way?" And I'm like, "But I listened to them so long, you know." So, and then I met them, and they were so great guys. And it was just like standing in front of them, it was just like I've known them forever. Like I know a lot about them, you know, but they have no idea who I am. <laughs> So, but there was just this connection between us that at least I felt and it, it built up uh, immediately. And yeah, I'm so grateful for that. You know, like I didn't feel like I was a stranger to them. So yeah, I just, I love, I just love this, this connection. I love that so much. Nina, do you have any last words about prayers about Good Charlotte or about yourself? Well, I have a tons of stories. I can like, do you want to hear an embarrassing story? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like um when we were in the UK and um we had the sound check uh package. So first of all we could talk to them and after that we, we got the, the picture taken, but it was like a separate room. Yeah. And we had to walk into this room. And I always thought when I entered the room I would walk straight to them, like I would see them lined up and I would walk to them. But it wasn't like that. When I turned the corner, I almost ran into Billy. <laughs> <laughs> he was standing right in front of me, and I was so like I was like my head was all like you need to walk slowly if you stumble it will be embarrassing you need to walk slowly and i turned the corner and Billy was right in front of me and i just went <laughs> like <laughs> i made the sound and i was like holy shit <laughs> that's so funny <laughs> and i'm sure you're not the first person that's had that kind of moment i don't know but billy was like he turned around looked at me and he laughed and he was like that's some reaction but it's like he wasn't me laughing you know he was just right. like as astonished as I was, and we just looked at each other, and I just hugged him, <laughs> because I was like, what am I going to do? And I just said on to him, and I'm like, I'm so sorry! <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it was really cool. And then when we were standing in line for the picture, I was so nervous. Like, like I hugged all of them, which was pretty special to me, because in Cologne, we weren't allowed to hug them anymore. <laughs> like, oh, okay. You know, so, um, but like, then I, I just hugged them, and Benji was like, how are you? And that's like, never ask a German this question because as a German, you think they want an answer. So I told him like in three sentences, I told him my whole life. <laughs> oh my gosh. And he just looked at me and I was like, okay, that's too much. <laughs> <laughs> but he was so, so nice. And like, I think they, they felt that I was really like, 
like running high on, on adrenaline and I was like, oh, yeah. oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And Joe just, when we were, we were standing in line, I was standing in between Benji and Joe and Joe put his hand uh, in the, uh, like on my back and immediately I calmed down. It was like he took oh. all this, this high energy out of me and I was like, oh yeah, he knows what he's doing. He's a father, you know? <laughs> so right, like, right, right. I'm like, yeah, that works. And then I was like, okay, like I have this connection to Joel. I somehow need to touch Benji in a way. So I put my hand on his shoulder, like from behind, you can see it on the picture. And like, I felt him breathing. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> my thoughts were just like, he's breathing. Like, and later I was like, are you stupid? Of course he's breathing. <laughs> but like, <clears throat> to me, it was like, they were always like only on TV or on posters or everything. They were never real. Yeah. And then I was standing in between them and they are the same height as me, you know, and I was just like, right. oh my God, this is so cool. <laughs> yeah. I, I definitely, when I was little, I always would picture like any people I looked up to, I always just um, assumed they were tall. I'm like, oh, if you're famous, yeah. <laughs> successful, you're just, you, you have to be really tall. Um, but Benji's like five, seven, which is, which is taller than me, taller than me. <laughs> I'm like... Um, what is Joel's at five nine? I think so. I think so. Yeah, yeah I think that's Joel's my, like so Joel a is taller. Joel is my my height. So yeah, I was like, oh, this is so cool. Yeah, and like in the crowd, um, you know, when uh, I think that I've been on a stage too, not for music, but more like for for musicals. We acted it. We didn't yeah. sing like it was playback, you know. But like sometimes you just look through the crowd and you need to focus on people. Yes. Just so you like you take focus, and I think. Like, that's my interpretation that Benji did that on me in, oh. in, in the Birmingham show like uh, after we first met them because he was always kind of, he wasn't actually looking at me as a person you know I could see that because he was just focusing in on me and um, I think that's true though because at one point we got pushed more towards Joel <laughs> and I saw Benji's eyes scanning the crowd and I jumped up and I waved and then he found me and he stayed like with his face right oh on me God. so I was like oh he got me back and I was like telling my husband I was like look at this he's looking at me and he was like, yeah, that's okay. You can flirt with Benji. I got a nice blonde girl here next to me, like flirting with me because <laughs> he got always pushed against him. So he kind of saved her. Like he put yeah. his arm like behind her to make sure she didn't get crushed. And yeah. funny thing is that woman texted me like on, like I, I had, uh, I posted a picture on uh, with me wearing my maid shirt, I think. Yeah. And good Charlotte retweeted it and she uh, commented on it. And she was like, didn't we see each other in Birmingham? And now she's like my best friend. I love <laughs> so, that. That's amazing. So cool. like, like it was like two weeks after the show and like we stood next to each other in the crowd, but we didn't really talk a lot because we met yeah. others. We talked to most of the time and they were standing next to us. Like, like we had like a small conversation, but not really a lot. And then yeah. she was texting me and we were like texting back and forth all the time. <laughs> we were like, oh my God, this is so cool. And I went down amazing. to my husband and I was like, do you remember the girl flirting with you? She's my friend now. And he's like, oh my gosh, what? Amazing. <laughs> but it's like, we were like laughing about this so much. And it's like, yeah, like this is my friend Lauren. And like, we talk every day and it's like, she's that. so special to me. And yeah, I, like I'm really thankful for Good Charlotte that they made this possible, you know, and for my husband that he took me to the UK. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. Nina, this has been amazing. Thank you for coming on the show. My last question for you is, do you have, so we have a Generation GC and Friends Spotify playlist where I like to include um, a recommendation from each of our listeners. So would you like to share a song, just anything you're listening to lately that's not Good Charlotte? This is really hard. I, I, <laughs> I thought a lot about this because, well, Lauren always tries to give me like band recommendations and she's always like, yeah, but it's not GC, you're not going to like it. Yeah. And this basically sums it up. <laughs> so... Um, like there's lots of songs I listen to, but she sees like my favorite band. So I really took a lot of thought into this and I'm actually um, like into some piano music right now. Okay. Just the piano is playing because it just calms me down in a way. Yeah. And uh, I have no idea how to pronounce this artist, but it's uh, Ye Yiruma or something. Like he's a piano player and the song is Kiss the Rain. Okay. And I, I really like that. So yeah. Amazing. Um, well, did you want to share your social media, like where people could find you? Are you okay with sharing that? Yeah, yeah, okay. So uh, my Twitter and my Instagram are both the same. It's uh, at Nienchen7789, Nienchen written with N-I-N-C-H-E-N. -E Perfect. But I want to say some, oh, yes. uh, I want to say one more thing. Like, yeah. um, I want to thank Good Charlotte for this song in particular because yeah. like, it helped me so much. And like, if they listen to this, I don't know, but if they do, like, I want to thank them for being people oh. that I can look up to and that make me try to be a better version of myself every day. Because whenever I feel down, 
I go back to their songs and I'm like, you can do this. Yeah. You know, this just means a lot to me. So Amazing. thank you for that. Nina, this has been fantastic. Thank you for coming on. Listeners, thank you for tuning in. Last week, we talked about Keep Swinging from Youth Authority. Next week, we'll be talking about a song from a self-titled album. My name is Molly Huddleston. I'm your host. You can follow Generation GC at Generation GC Pod, P O D, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And you can also follow me, Molly, at M Huddleston, M H U D E L S O N, on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please make sure to subscribe to the show or follow it wherever you listen and rate, review, and tell all your friends, spread the word, tell the world. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>